Hello and welcome to Eclectic Classes. This video is the fourth lesson in the series of industrial communication protocols in which we will cover RS485. In our last video which was on RS232 we studied that RS232 a serial communication protocol was designed in the year 1969. But it had many limitations like it can communicate between two points only. Multiple devices could not be grouped on one network using RS232. Distance was limited to 50 meters and speed was limited to 20 kbps. Due to the limitations of RS232, different protocols were designed out of them. The RS485 standard is one of the most versatile of all the RS interface standards. It is nothing but an extension of RS422. The RS485 standard is very useful for instrumentation and control systems where several instruments or controllers may be connected together on the same network. The RS485 had changed its name with time. Initially it was termed as RS485, later RS term was replaced with EIA and the same protocol came to be known as EIA485. When the EIA disbanded this protocol it came to be known as TIA485A. If we talk about the features of RS485, it permits a multi-drop network connection on two wires and allows reliable serial data communication for distances up to 1200 meter, data rates up to 10 Mbps, up to 32 line drivers on the same network, up to 32 line receivers on the same network. RS485 works really well in noisy environment due to its inherent noise immunity as it uses differential signaling. In a RS485 network, if more than 32 transceivers are required, repeaters could be used to extend the network. We have just come to know that RS485 supports data rate up to 10 Mbps and the network could be 1200 meter long. But there is a catch in this. Data rate will be inversely proportional to the cable length. If we will use a cable up to 6 meter, then we can have a data rate of 10 Mbps. But if we keep on increasing the cable length, then at 1200 meter, we can have a data rate of 90 Kbps only. Now let's understand how RS485 works. The communication on RS485 happens in form of differential signaling on two copper wires called A and B. An additional wire may be used for common ground across all the connected devices. As of now, we will concentrate only on line A and B. Information or data transmission which is nothing but 0 and 1 is done in form of electrical signals only. So line A and B are provided electrical voltages as per the data to be sent. When A is lower than B it is a logic 1 also called mark and when B is lower than A it is logic 0 also called space. This is a diagram rep representing the signaling in RS485. Here we can see how relative voltage between line A and B decides the transmitted bit. A very important thing here is differential signaling. To understand the same, we can consider a logic 1 will be transmitted when line A is at 0 volt and line B at plus y volt. That is, line A is lower than line B. And a logic 0 will be transmitted when line A is at plus 5 volt and line B at 0 volt. That is, line B, e, line B is lower than A. In real world scenario, voltages are usually somewhere around plus or minus 2 volt with reference to each other. As RS485 is a multi point network protocol, addressing is of paramount importance for data transmission from the source to the intended receiver. 
so all the connected devices must be allocated a unique address so that data could be sent to required recipient terminal. In a RS-485 network, any line driver may work in three states, logic 1, logic 0 and high impedance. Logic 1 state is when a logic 1 is being transmitted. Logic 0 state is when a logic 0 is being transmitted and in high impedance state the line driver draws virtually no current and appears not to be present on the line. This is known as the disabled state and can be initiated by a signal on a control pin on the line driver. In case of high bit rates or long lines, the two farthest terminals must be connected using 120 ohm resistors. It is done to minimize the signal reflections as much as possible. This is an example that how a RS-485 network looks. The circuit shown here is of a half duplex RS-485 network. Here we can see every terminal has a driver and a receiver. Driver will send the data 0 and 1 on the network and receiver will receive the sent data. Terminating resistors are also installed on the two farthest terminals. RS-485 can also be connected in full duplex mode using 4 wires. In a full duplex type of connection, it is necessary that one node is a master node and all others are slaves. The master node communicates to all slaves but a slave node can communicate only to the master. Two wires are for transmission from the master node and two wires are for reception at the master node. Terminating resistors are again installed on the two farthest terminal. During normal operation, there are some periods when all RS-485 drivers are off and the communication lines are in idle state, that is high impedance state, that is no data is being sent on the network. In this condition, the lines may pick up noise which will be interpreted as random characters on the communication line. To solve this problem of noise getting picked up as characters being transmitted in idle state, we should incorporate bias resistors. For a plus 5 volt supply and 120 ohm terminators, a bias resistor value of 560 ohm is sufficient. The bias resistors are to be installed on one node only. Till now, we have known how data is being sent and received in RS-485 on a 2-wire and rarely on 4-wire connections. Now we will know which type of connectors are used in connecting terminals on the network. Installation rules for RS-485 vary with manufacturer and no standard connectors has been defined for a RS-485 connection. Different manufacturers use different connectors for RS-485 connections. The most common type of connector used on most RS-485 system is either a one-part or two-part screw connector. The preferred connector is the two-part screw connector with the sliding box under the screw as shown in the figure. Manufacturers sometimes use the DB9 connector instead of a screw connector. The DB9 connector has problems when used for multi-drop connections. RS-485 multi-drop system requires the connection of two wires so that the second wire can continue down the line to the next device. This can be achieved in a simple manner with screw connectors, but it is not that easy with a DB9 connector. With a screw connector, the two wires can be twisted together and be inserted in the connector under the screw. With a DB9 connector, the two wires must be soldered together with a third wire and then the third wire can be soldered on the pin of the DB9 connector. With this, we conclude our session on RS-485. Hope you like the video. Do watch the session on RS232 and many other videos which I have posted on my channel.
If you like the video, let me know your feedback in the comment section and let me know which other protocol do you want me to cover in my future videos. Subscribe to my channel and like and share the video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.